Welcome to this episode of First Time Hustle. I'm Kim McCarty. And I'm Dave Stahl. All right, today we're going to talk about bright and shiny things. Bright and shiny, like carrots being dangled in front of us. Bright and shiny. As first time home buyers, we're always, would you say, looking for the deal, right? Absolutely. Because maybe we don't have a huge down payment or maybe we are within a budget that we have to stay within. So we're always looking for the bright and shiny or the next new thing or the carrot dangled in front of us. So and the simple way to know it's bright and shiny, get on Google, do homes for sale and put your town's name there. And I promise you the first five things that pop up are bright and shiny. Bright and shiny. Okay. So right now our bright and shiny is with our builder community, right? Yep. Our builder community out there, they're offering crazy low rates. So they're buying down the rate, they're buying down the points, um, and they're offering that back to the potential buyer. Correct. Okay. So let's say I am a first time home buyer and I'm going into a new community and they're offering 3.99% interest rate. Okay? okay. All right. Now most well, this, one, this one's real. It's this real. real. So it's real. To to explain this one, there there's a set parameter that you have to follow with them. Yes. A. And I think that one's like an FHA loan. So that one's FHA. The first year is 3.99, and then two through 30 would be 4.99. Right. So that so what they're doing is they're doing, I'll call it an advanced rate lock, because that's the easiest thing to understand. Okay. Uh it's not that's not its technical name, but I'll call it an advanced it's rate lock. It's the Dave name. That's Dave's name, yeah. Okay. So advanced rate lock is when the builder goes, hey, I've got these five or six homes. We're going to have them sold in the next 60 days. They go to their in-house lender and they advance purchase rates. Okay. So they'll go, all right, got these five these five or 10 houses, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever the total volume of loans is, we're going to commit to that at X rate and we're going to pay you know, in that case of 4.99, it's 6% okay. to be able to advance lock that. So right. what the builder's doing on on their net sheet on their end is they're taking away 6% of whatever your loan is from their profit. So it's built in, right? Because they're not adjusting the price. Right, they're not right. adjusting the price. So they're, they're giving you that lower rate, they're absorbing the cost because it helps them to be able to sell that inventory because now they have something to sell. Right. Where the resale community, they're like, oh wow, I'm gonna sell this house and you're gonna get the going rate and ooh, that's exciting. Exactly. <laughs> so they're actually, if you think about it, it's actually pretty smart what they're it, doing. It, bright and shiny. Bright and shiny, it's really smart. It doesn't help you what they're doing, right? No. Nope. But I will say you have educated many buyers that we've had and I will be very honest, we've had a lot of first time home buyers go new construction because of this opportunity. Yep. Now, I asked you this earlier tonight, if you were given the same opportunity, would you do it? Because I know that what I do as it relates to buying real estate is a long-term deal. Yes. 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 If okay. you think it's short term, you can't do it. But as we educate first time home buyers on building wealth, this is an opportunity for them to lock in a really pretty low interest rate yep. and to be able to turn around and rent this house out, keep it and buy their next piece of real estate, but keep this low interest rate because the interest rate stays with them. Correct. Okay. Correct. But I, I, I say that because there, there are some people who don't want to do that. Right. Of there, course. there are some people, like, oh, that's a hassle. That, you know, they don't want to. If, if for that person, if they don't know that their situation is going to be stable and they're going to be in that area for a while, it doesn't make sense to do because let, let's say in a year or two years, something happens and you have to sell. If the builder is still selling in that neighborhood, you are not the preferred seller in the neighborhood. The builder. Well, I was just going to say that. So when you buy new construction, you really have to look at a five year to seven year opportunity. There. Absolutely. Because if the builder or the area around you is still building, you cannot offer the same incentives, right? You can't offer 10,000 in closing costs, a 4.99 interest rate, and oh, we're gonna buy your refrigerator blinds and all that stuff. And people like bright, shiny, and new. Yep. Okay. So we can't compete with that. So as a first time buyer, if I'm buying in a brand new 
community, I need to be thinking of more of a five to seven year plan. At a minimum. At a minimum, okay. But if I am good with a five to seven year plan, I really potentially, there's no harm in buying that new construction at that 4.99% interest rate and taking the builder's inflated price, because we know that's where they're making their money back up is in yep. that inflated price, and then turning around and either holding that investment or by wait seven years and the community's built out, selling it. Correct. Okay, do you see any downside to that bright and shiny thing that they're dangling in front of us right now? I wouldn't want to be the first one to buy. In, in the community? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's me just because of that that fear of what if something happens and I need to sell. Yeah. I think that if I was going to buy in one of those neighborhoods, I'd like want to be... One of this, the last ones Is this in. the last phase? Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's what I would be thinking because I... Okay. Because I know that if I have to compete against the builder, I can't compete. True. If I have to sell. True. And I know that younger me wanted nothing to do with property management, collecting rent, True. paying somebody else to do it. The, the, the light over the kitchen table broke. It's got to be replaced. I'm like, no. no. I, did, I did it for a year when I was younger and I hated it. Okay. Now that I'm older, I could probably do it. Or you can hire somebody having, to do it. Well, I did hire somebody to do it paid them a fee and still had to field the calls about, can we do this? So it's, yeah, it's one of those things that it takes the right person to do that. Right. And some people, younger people don't, they have the capacity and capability to do it, but will they do it? Will they do it is the question. Okay. So it sounds great, but will they do it is the question. And that's something that I think that as a first time home buyer buying a new build, that's a question you have to ask yourself going in. Because there's a chance that you're going to get a different job at a different place and you might not live in that house forever. Right. Now, if you're self-employed and you're doing it, yeah, that's a different story. Right. But if you're working for a corporation, there's a the chance. The potential to be relocated right. or... Right. The relocated, right. getting paid more, you know, you know, move to, you know, to Ohio for three years and right. then move back. I mean, all of that stuff can happen. So as a first-time home buyer buying in an area like that or taking that deal you've got to make sure that you consider all of these options. I think we've got a client right now that I directed him to, to buy from Builder. Yeah. And he just bought a couple of years ago from a builder in Florida. Yeah. So he's doing exactly what we've talked about. Right. But it takes a special type of person to be able to do it. Well, and for him, especially, like we're pushing further and further out. And that's the thing that I will say is that as these builders offer these incentives, they're in communities that are newer, or further out than maybe you are as far as work. And so that's something else to consider. Like how far are you willing to go and make that drive? And if you're like, if you're in the DFW area, you know that traffic is a nightmare. So are you willing to spend an hour in the car one way? Right. To buy a house at 300,000 versus buying a little bit closer at 350, but thinking about the money that you're saving and gas and time, et cetera. So I that, think you got to look at all the pieces. That bright and shiny, ridiculously low rate. Yes, and comes with the price. Well, ridiculous amount of closing costs. It's really hard to stretch. I mean, because just that one client, the comparison, the difference in the monthly payment was three, three hundred fifty dollars a month. Yeah. So that that's, is it worth the extra gas? Is it worth the extra time? And Ooh, my company has an office here. It's closer to where I live. Can I go there? Yeah. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're looking at that. You know, me personally, my my parents, when I was a kid growing up, always lived to where it was like a 45 minute to an hour drive because it was less expensive. So I, I learned from that yeah. that, you know, in the city is kind of cool, but live you out, get more real estate outside. Yeah, you get, yeah. you get more living outside of town. So, okay. you know, from, from that perspective, I'm all in on take a little drive. So when we're looking at bright and shiny right now with the new builders, yes, it might be a great opportunity. You need to really talk to a local realtor, a local lender. And just like the client that I sent to you, I knew that there is about a 99% chance he wasn't going to use you yep. because he's going to end up using the builder's lender. Yep. But you still educated him on what it's going to look like, what it's going to, what it's going to cost him a month. And you actually told him to get what you want, you got to go 
new build. Mm -hmm. You can't get it and resell. So a good local lender that is looking out for your best interest is going to give you the right facts because at the end of the day, we know that they're eventually going to buy another house someplace else and they're going to call you and remember you. Well, they're going to know somebody else who doesn't want to Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. And that's the other thing is that we're educating all these new buyers on all these areas and where is the best place to land because there's a lot of areas right now that we're like uh maybe you should stay away from this area but you should look at this area so right. you have to you have to be there as a guided resource for Absolutely. sure all right so any other final thoughts no that, i mean that i think we've i mean we covered that pretty well because yes there's, there's a lot at least in our area and I, and I was talking to somebody earlier today in our area i i would probably venture to say that 75 percent of the first time home buyers or going new construction. Would well, you they almost have to. Okay, so because going going resale, they have, they're having a more difficult time because the, those properties aren't offering up those incentives. Right. I promise, I'm trying to educate agents on how to do that. Right. But it's not it's not happening overnight. No. So for most first time home buyers, probably seventy five percent of them in our area, they're going to new construction. Yep. Before you go sit down and talk with them, I agree. Talk to a local lender. Yep. Some somebody who's going to give you advice for free and not like hang up on you because they know you're not going to use them. Absolutely. And take an agent with you. Don't go to a new build without an agent. No, and and that's the misconception. They always think they're going to get a better deal if they don't bring an agent. No. Nope. It's all built in. Yeah. It's all built in. You're not getting a better. You don't deal. bring an agent. They love you because they're <laughs> making three to four percent more. Yeah, they are, and those sales agents who work for the builder are actually getting a bigger bonus. So yeah. for yeah. sure. All right, so if they need to get a hold of you, how do they do? 972. <laughs> how do they get a hold of you? You can call me, 972-896-8790. And I'm at 214-662-9308.